Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to display and enter time values with four digits only for military time, such as 1900 or 0430. Now, before we get started, if you're not familiar with the format property, go watch my format video. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. I'll put links down below. You can click on. And you should also be familiar with the input mask property and how to use those. So go watch that video too. These are both free. Okay, so if you have a field that you want to store just a time value in, not a date time, but just a time value, such as clock in and clock out for a time clock table, you can set the format property to short time and it will display like you see right there, right? 17 colon 34, that's 24 hour time, all right? But military time generally doesn't have that colon separator. And if you try to type in a new value like 0450 without the colon separator, you get an error message. The value you entered does not match the date time data type in this column, and it won't let you do it. Now, you can change the format property to just HHNN. Remember, N is for minutes because M is already used. That's for months. Okay, so if we put the format property in as HHNN, the time will be displayed without the colon separator. However, you still have to type in that pesky colon. Otherwise, you get an error message. So this is where our friend the handy input mask comes in. All right, set the input mask to 00, zero colon zero, 00. What that says is 0 means you have to enter a digit there, and the colon is going to just display an actual colon. You don't have to type it in, though, because it's part of the input mask. And the data that gets saved in the table doesn't include that colon, but Access will convert this over to a proper time. So now you can actually type in values like 1900, or 1450 and they are converted to proper time values. Now you might sometimes see that colon separator, all right, while you're typing in the field, but you can pretty much just ignore it and type the four digits. All right, so here's my table. If I come in here and I hit tab, right, I type in 0730 and it takes it just fine, right? 1530, see, you can see that colon pops up, especially when you're entering in new values. If you're typing over an existing one, it doesn't display it. All right, but if you add a new record down here, like 1300, see? Okay, but if your goal is for your data entry people just to be able to go tab 1300, tab 0700, tab whatever, and not have to type in that colon, then this technique works great. You'll also see the full time value in the field if you click on it, but unfortunately, that's unavoidable with this simple technique. In other words, if you click on one of these fields, you're going to see that 10 o'clock p.m. And there's really no easy way around that. To do something else would require some VB programming. It gets a little more, gets a little more complicated at that point. Now, if you want to also capture the date value, I suggest putting it in a separate field. Like here, I've got a work date, date field. Remember, don't just call it date. Date by itself is a reserved word because it's a function. And here I've got the default value set to date. All right, that'll take today's date and put it in that field. So if you're entering in your, your clock in and clock out for today, you don't even have to type in the date. And of course, if you want to learn more about the default value property, I got a video for that too. I'll put a link down below. And this also works, by the way, if you only have people clocking in and clocking out that, and it doesn't span over midnight. So if you do like, you know, a shift that can go from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. the next day, then you'll need two different date fields. But if it's all just, you know, shift one, shift two type work where it's, you know, nine to five, this will work just fine. All right, this will allow you to type in the date just once or get it by default value and then each separate time only without having to type in date and time for both fields. All right, you just type in one slash one space 1430, and then one slash one space 1600. Whereas with this way, you just type in the date once and then the clock in and the clock out times. Now you can always put those values together to make a full date time value with a calculated query field. 
And guess what? If you don't know what calculated query fields are, go watch this video. All right, links down below. Here, for example, I create a calculated clock in date time field, which is the work date plus the clock in date. Remember, date time values are basically numbers. So I can take a date and add just a time to it, and we get that time on that date, right? So here I've got January 1st at 1430. So now we get over here, the full date time, right? January 1st, 2.30 p.m. And now it's easy to do calculations on both of these. And if you want to get fancy, you could even say, okay, if the clock out time is less than the clock in time, add a date of that. You want to use a little if function in there. I'm not going to cover that today, but if you guys want to see how to do that, let me know. I'll make another video. Post a comment down below. You could say if this value is less than that value, add one to this. And of course, that assumes that you never have shifts that go over, say, 12 hours. Otherwise, someone could theoretically clock in at 2 p.m. on Monday, clock out at 3 p.m. on Tuesday, right? <laughs> Then we're violating some kind of law somewhere. <laughs> so there you go. There's the quick and dirty on military time. If you want to just type in values without having to type in a colon. All right. It's not perfect, but it's, it's close enough. Now, unfortunately, you do have to type in that leading zero also. You can't just type in 930 and have it turn into 0930. All right. So you got to tell your people they have to type in all four digits. There isn't an easy solution around that. Again, there's, we can do everything if you want to get into some VBA programming. Right, I would make that basically a text field and then format it accordingly and store the actual value in an underlying field, but that's a lot more advanced. So again, I'll, I'll make videos to show you guys whatever you want to see. So if enough people holler, I'll, I'll do it. So just put a comment down below and uh, we'll go from there. So I hope you learned something with this tip and uh, we'll see you next time. Enjoy. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. 
Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.